And now we look at the new Sony smartphone against another of the top smartphones in the market. It's Joshua Vigar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And here we have a quick look at the Sony Xperia Z1 versus the HTC One. <laughs> If there's one thing both these phones excel at, it's at being different in their design philosophies. It's tempered glass versus full aluminum, and it's nice to get a reminder of how diverse our smartphones can get. The HTC One is the aluminum clad phone with a very smooth back that could slip out if you're not careful. At 4.7 inches on its screen, the One did fill up all that extra space with the front facing speakers. Contrast that with the glass encased Xperia Z1, which takes a very rectangular, flat, and angled corner look in order to bring a different look and feel. The silver power button is on the side, and the 5-inch screen is actually not too hard to handle. In this case, it really comes down to your preference and look and feel. Do you want the metallic look of the HTC One or the decisive feel of the Xperia Z1's corners and flatness? Either way, you'll have a great looking phone. The display situation is somewhat a battle of sizes, but the quality is high up there for both. The 4.7 inch display on the HTC One is a super LCD screen capable of 1080p resolution. As one of the few screens under 5 inches but still 1080p, it's a great performer that brings more than adequate levels of brightness and vibrancy. The same can be said for the triluminous 5 inch screen on the Xperia Z1, which is backed by the X Reality engine. The end result is a display experience that is much like holding a small Sony TV. Both are great performers, and as you can see here, both do well under the bright lights of the Sony booth. Once again, the performance section is a spec race, as the Xperia Z1 gets a little bit of the advantage by getting the updated Snapdragon 800 clocked in at 2.2GHz and the updated Adreno 330. Compare this to the earlier released HTC One that has the Snapdragon 600 clocked in at 1.7 and the Adreno 320. Both perform equally as well, however, even if the Xperia Z might technically get the edge. Whether you're flying through the Xperia UI or Blink Feed, I'm certain the general user will get a great experience either way. The Xperia Z1 does sport expandable memory and features a 3000 mAh battery over the fixed storage and 2300 mAh battery unit in the HTC One. The cameras are important to both of these phones as the HTC One touted the Ultra Pixels that brought the number of megapixels down to 4 but up their quality and low light performance. Well, if you want much larger pictures with around the same level of low light quality, Sony is touting its G lens that comes in at a massive 20.7 megapixels and comes with a number of enhancements to help its performance. And while HTC might have Zoe to consolidate your photos and videos in a nice manner, Sony opened up its camera to downloadable app enhancements that help you get really creative. And finally, in software, we look at the somewhat stock-like experience in the Xperia UI over the addition of BlinkFeed in Sense. Both HTC and Sony keep things pretty simple in the big picture as the small apps and Sony apps like the Walkman are the additions in the Z1, and then the news and social media aggregator in BlinkFeed helps bolster the Sense UI. For the most part, you'll be getting a pretty classic Android experience either way, with no real enhancements in terms of navigation other than the different additions that Sony and HTC put in. And so... There you have it. Both of these phones manage to achieve simplistic elegance while still being quite different in their own rights. HTC's phone has made waves for the company and Sony hopes that that same trend happens with this next release. For more on the Xperia Z1, stick with us here on Android Authority as we bring you the latest from IFA in Berlin.